Do you want to get your Unity scene from this to this in just 15 minutes? Then this is how. This can easily be the difference between just a few downloads on itch.io or having thousands of downloads on Steam or other platforms. In this part we are gonna work on the basics so everything builds up from here and we are gonna work on detail and performance in the next two parts. First off, what will we need in order to achieve hyperrealism? The assets we choose should obviously be of high quality and we're gonna add some realistic materials in order to make the realism even more believable. There are also two different ways of creating reflections in our scene to make our scene even more believable. Finishing off with lighting, post-processing and skyboxes. Okay, but let's begin. We are gonna create a new HDRP Unity project. Keep in mind, this might take a while, so I suggest you pause the video and wait till your Unity is loaded. Now you can open the project in your explorer and import the material library. After that is done loading, you can import the object you want to render. In this case, we are gonna render a car in a beautiful nature environment. We are gonna set up a camera in order to achieve a basic position of where we want the camera to later be. Now this step is important. We want to use the material library and place every material we want onto our car in order to have realistic looking materials with a lot of detail. The reason we want to use the material library is in order to save time on creating a lot of materials that are gonna either end up being difficult or looking bad, making our scene unrealistic. Now on to creating a realistic sky. In order to have a realistic sky, you want to have clouds as a base layer instead of the basic radiant. Using the lighting and exposure cheat sheet, we can also very easily create a ultra realistic looking sun. Using the directional light intensity and the exposure values and inputting them from the cheat sheet into our Unity project. We are also going to add shadows and micro shadows to our volume in order to make it even more believable. It is time to work on our reflections. We are going to add screen space reflections to our volume and then navigate to our HDRP project settings. We are going to select all of them, go to lighting, rendering and enabling the screen space reflections. We can now tweak the values in the volume and change to PBR accumulation in order to have less stuttery looking reflections in the end. If you want you can also change the quality but this will impact performance. Now finally, if you have some lighting in your scene, we are gonna add some bloom in order to make it a bit less cloudy and foggy and more controllable. The last thing we are gonna add is a real-time reflection probe to our camera so it moves together with the camera, reset its position and set it to real-time instead of baked. Now you can just change the area that should be affected by the reflection probe. Keep in mind, don't make it too large because this will heavily impact performance. That is it for this episode. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our discord in the description down below. The next part is all about going into detail on how it works and how to get even better results for your use case. We're even going as far as making a product animation that includes animation and detailing and custom effects for the whole commercial.